Thanks for being here for another BDSM United podcast. Uh, we're going to continue our Types of Play series today with an episode on spanking. Uh, just about everybody knows what spanking is. Uh, many people have felt uh, a spanking at some point in their lives, usually as children, when they've done something wrong. Uh, many people look at spanking as a disciplinary measure only and wonder how those of us in BDSM can actually enjoy spanking and even find it erotically stimulating. This is a favorite type of play for most people. It's one of the few types of pain play that can be done by anyone without any extra toys. All you need is your own hands, uh, perhaps a set of gloves, and someone to spank. Spanking can be done in any number of positions and consists of striking the buttocks and sometimes the upper thighs. There are those who say a spanking is only a spanking if just a hand is used and, and only buttocks are struck, yet it's the positioning and tone of the session that differentiates it from other types of play. You can do the action of spanking using paddles, straps, belts, crops, or slappers. Uh, slippers, rulers, and many other toys can also be used. But as a word of caution, uh, if you're new, a beginner, and your technique may be still building, uh, I would avoid any DIY uh, spanking materials because you may not know what they're made of. They may not be body safe. They may splinter. They may uh, they may break, and so it's often the best. And what we recommend is that you get the right tool for the job. Uh, BDSM spanking paddles are really inexpensive to get started, just a few dollars, ten dollars or less in the U.S. And um, they're widely available. You can get them on Amazon, but we suggest you. Um, you use your favorite adult bookstore or adult novelty store. And so uh, avoid anything DIY like a, like a ruler or uh, a ping pong paddle or something like that because uh, um, the material may not be body safe. And so uh, and you, they, if they break or splinter in any way, um, that can injure a person, and also uh, oftentimes they're difficult to sterilize. So uh, sometimes when you spank, it can break the skin, and uh, if the item that you're using isn't, isn't sterilized or isn't completely clean or isn't dedicated just to that task of spanking, then uh, you, in, infections can occur just to be risk-aware. Uh, depending on the position chosen, some toys may be uncomfortable for the spanker to use. Um, most of the positions place the spank E, and that's the person receiving the spanking, in a bent over body posture, presenting their bottom to the spanker. And that's the top in the scene, uh, the one giving the action of spanking. OTK, or over the knee, or lap, is the classic spanking position. The spanky lays themselves across the spanker's lap. The spanky's hips should rest on the thigh of the spanker's dominant hand, right or left, depending on which hand is dominant for the one giving the spanking. Their hands can be touching the floor or the rungs of a chair. The, the spanker should place their arm across the lower back of the spanky, uh, hand holding at the waist and elbow resting comfortably between or beneath the shoulder blades. This stabilizes and prevents any possible falling off the lap, as well as giving the spanker control of the spanky's body to hold them in place. Uh, this is best done in a straight back chair or in some other place that allows the spanker to sit upright comfortably and support the weight of the spanky. A uh, chair with like arms, like what I'm sitting in now, like a gaming chair, probably wouldn't be good unless you can fold up the armrests and allow the person to lay across you. Uh, variances on this position can include placing the legs of the spanky between the legs of the spanker and having them bend over one thigh. This effectively traps the spanky's legs and prevents kicking or interference. 
This position also increases the humiliation factor for the spanky. Uh, being over someone's lap to be spanked can be quite humiliating for some people, which can be a very good thing in BDSM play. Uh, other positions can include laying face down on a flat surface, elevating the hips and therefore the buttocks with pillows, bending over a table or a desk, bending over and grasping the shins, the ankles, or the knees. This is a classic paddling position. And bending over the back of a piece of furniture, such as a couch or a chair. Whatever the position, the spanker should have easy access to the spanky without having to bend over and with adequate room, <clears throat> excuse me, for whatever uh, they is, is going, whatever they're going to use for the spanking. Selecting a position is up to the people involved, but you may want to consider the following factors when deciding. If this is to be a long session, a more comfortable position for both participants might be a good idea. Also take into account mobility issues. Modifications may need to be made to account for any type of disability or health concern. Uh, a lot of different people with a lot of different body types and a lot of different um, uh, abilities and a lot of different uh, health concerns may enjoy spanking. And so you definitely want to accommodate for uh, those who are involved so that everyone is comfortable while receiving pleasurable pain. <laughs> If this is to be a punishment session, you may wish to choose a position that requires the spanky to participate by continuously having to lift his or her buttocks for the next strike. Now, the pain of a spanking can last quite some time after the spanking's completed. It's not the strength of the strikes which creates the lasting effect. It's the length of time the session went on. During a spanking, the nerve endings in the buttocks, they become numb, decreasing much of the actual pain. If you're going for pain, you may wish to take periodic breaks between the spanking sessions to allow the nerves to come back to life. If you're going for that lasting glow, you may wish to consider using lighter strikes for a longer period of time or taking breaks as, a, as stated above. If, if you want to create more sting with your hand, try separating your fingers as you strike. So this is a classic right here, a classic, you know, spanking position here. Try spreading your fingers some and something like that. There you go. This displaces the sting over a larger area and allows more airflow between the fingers, effectively creating more strength behind the blow. Another way is to hold your hand slightly cupped. So your hand is typically flat with a spanking session. Try cupping it like this and try and just kind of scooping. Like yeah, there you go, like that. And, um, uh, you know, holding your hand slightly cupped, fingers tightly together and wrist rigid. This creates the sensation similar to a paddle, and it really does work well. The endorphins in the body will respond to the pain and create a high for the spanky, the one receiving the spanking. Now, some safety tips. Don't strike an area that's white in color or already forming a bruise. This can cause more serious bruising. And alternate the areas you're striking, oftentimes between blows. You know, strike, uh, don't strike back to back in the same spot for too many times before you kind of alternate back and forth. This creates a wider base of warmth and prevents the nerves from growing numb too fast. And always don't strike the kidney area. It's just a bad idea. It can cause some serious damage to a person. Spankings can be very erotic. The heat generated in the buttocks will spread throughout the pelvic area of the spanky. This heat can raise one's passions really quickly. A slow spanking alternating the strength of the blows can be really quite arousing. For those who enjoy pain play, this creates a warm-up so the harder blows don't feel as, as painful. To increase the arousing effect of a spanking, you can do a lot of different things. Um, you 
you can draw it out. You can tell the spank E what you're going to do to them, how aroused it will make them, how much you will enjoy it. In my, I like to call, tell my, my submissive that she's a good girl. That she's going to take it all. Uh, play it up slowly, position and reposition the spanky. Mix the strikes with arousing touches, caresses, kisses, even nibbles. And um, add some toys if you want to. A vibrating butt plug or a butt plug in general. A vibrating egg or other things which really turn your partner on. Caress the buttocks with ice. The sharp contrast in the sensations can cause many people to become really aroused. Alternate your strikes to include the back of the thighs, the inner thighs, and the sweet spot where the thigh meets the curve of the buttocks. And even the genitals, but use light strikes on the genital area. The nerves there are a lot more sensitive than the buttocks. The over-the-knee position places the clitoris of a female spanky in contact with the thigh of the spanker. This can allow for them to become very aroused as she wiggles on the lap, therefore stimulating the, cr the clitoris. After the spanking, it's important to follow with a proper aftercare. A cooling lotion applied to the heated skin can be a great way to soothe your partner as well as lead into other activities. Even if no aftercare is desired, it's still a good idea to provide some medical type care to any cuts or bruises that may occur. The proper aftercare can bring the session to a wonderful close and prevent confusion or alienation of the spanky. Oftentimes, just a very short conversation will do for anyone who doesn't want aftercare. You want to just check the area for any kind of cuts, put a bandage on, uh, any kind of bruising. Just make sure that, uh, you know, that the person is okay before they leave the session. Some people like other types of aftercare, uh, like cuddling your partner or other ways soothing them are useful in helping the partner to come down. If the spanking was for punishment, then soothing actions perhaps shouldn't be done, but eventually the spanky should be made aware that they've been forgiven for whatever the transgression to the relationship was and assured that they are still cared for. I'm Primal Piggy. You can find me on Facebook at The Primal Piggy, all one word. You can also find me as an admin of a rather large Facebook page called Whips, Chains, and Duct Tape. You can find that on Facebook at WCDT BDSM. You can find us on the web at www.bdsmunited.com. If you're listening on your favorite platform, all we ask is that you uh, leave a like, a subscribe, uh, leave a review. This allows you to connect with us, and it also allows other people to uh, to find this podcast and to find these uh, free adult, and we think pretty high quality, educational resources. We've been doing uh, BDSM education since 2012, and so we put in a lot of years and a lot of time and a lot of effort into uh, teaching adults nonviolent, consensual, traditional BDSM. This has been BDSM United. Thank you for listening today.